Hi everybody, long time no see. It's Rachel here from ratesthestamper.com and today I'm going to show you this really cute card. I actually um, semi-cased this from a card that, oh I can't, uh, Pink Buckaroo designed. I can't, Erica Serwin. So she kind of did something similar, <clears throat> but I kind of changed up the foreground part of the card. So I actually added the stitch triangle and then I did a little bit different of a background with the masking after tracing this and I'm not sure if I really 100% like it I think I might do it a different way this second time around so this card my sister-in-law I'm really pretty sure she does not watch my YouTube videos so hopefully she won't because this is her birthday card but this is going to be her birthday card and then I thought it'd be kind of fun to actually create a different card so this stamp set is in the spring mini catalog so you have it's called nuts and bolts it's really cute there's a couple of examples here I've done a lot of cards with this stamp set because I really like it. I think the robots are just absolutely adorable. You could certainly switch out to a different type of a robot. We have this one you could use for Valentine's cards, which I did create one with that. This one I made a really simple card with before. And then I also kind of thought on the background here, so we're going to keep it very similar. We're going to change up the card color. So I'm going to actually change the colors in the background to match the robot that I already did. Now I already colored a robot and I fussy cut it, but what I'm actually going to do is color one and then I'll show you that way we don't have to do the fussy cutting. I'll just show you the colors that I used instead. So we're going to be sticking kind of with the same thing. We're also going to use this mask. I believe this is the patterns mask, but forgive me, I'm not 100% sure. I'll make sure when I link the video that I post um, all the supplies that'll be used will be down below in the description. I'm also using the stitched triangles. So I'm using this right angle triangle here. I already pre-cut this. This is basic gray cardstock. And what we're going to do though is we're going to add a little bit of something different to it. So to get started, and I believe I already stamped one. Yes, I did. So I stamped a robot. So I just kind of stuck with the same one and I did all the sentiments that way they would have time to dry. And what we're going to do is we're going to color this little dude in. So we're going to kind of put some of these things to the side. I'll move this up here. And then I have dark and light Bermuda Bay and then dark and light polished pink. So essentially for the robot that we're going to be creating today, I'll show you what I did and then we'll kind of go back and then that way I don't have to fussy cut it for you. I'll just fussy cut the words. But I always start with the light color. So these are the Stampin' Blends. These are the alcohol-based market markers. So the ink that I used for this is actually VersaFine ink. You could also use Memento, but you do not want to use Stays On. Stays On is also an alcohol-based ink and it will smear. So you want to make sure you let this dry. As a matter of fact, for this card, I'll show you the other one that I did. For this one, this is just a black ink, but you can also add black embossing powder to it and that will kind of give you a raised edge as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our light. Okay, just like so. And then also when I did the cog flower, I really didn't love it. So I'm gonna change and I'll show you what I did when I give you the second one. But for this version, if you just give me a few minutes, I'll show you the other one as well. Okay, sorry, drop my marker. So I'm gonna kind of go with the dots being the dark. Just like that. I'm just kind of adding in a little bit. Same thing again. This is the polished pink. Oh, you know what? I did the arms dark. And the other thing is we are going to fussy cut this. So if this isn't your thing, you could stamp it on something that was going to be a little bit larger. So you could kind of add your fussy cutting. If not, it just depends. You could do it with a stitched oval or a regular oval if you still happen to have the stitch shapes, which are amazing. So then I'm going to go in with my light Bermuda Bay, and I'm just bringing a little bit of this to the side. So this will make a little bit more sense once we start blending. Kind of not putting in a whole lot of areas. I'm trying to kind of, kind of follow what I did for the other one. And hands, the feet were the same color. So I'm going to go back with my light now. So I'm going to go ahead and actually color in my light. So my feet were light 
And then I'm gonna just take, I'm starting with the dark color. So I'm just kind of blending it over. And then I'm blending over into that Bermuda, which actually is creating a purple. So it's really kind of, really kind of cool because now I, I almost made my own, just a little bit different of a color. And then same thing, I'm just blending out my colors here. Not being really particularly kind of hard and fast. I'm just, just kind of doing the best I can. So then I'm actually going to take my darker marker <laughs> and I'm going to do the inside of the cog flower. And then I'm going to just blend out just a little bit. Sounds like a herd of elephants downstairs. Rainbow Stamper running around. And then I'm going to take the light, again, the light Bermuda Bay. And I'm just going to do the bottom. And then the light polished pink. And kind of blend it. Now, this is a little bit darker than what I did before. And I'm going to show you what you can do. You can always take your color lifter. And quite honestly, I don't use this very often. But you can blend over here just a little bit and what you're doing is you're removing the color so you kind of always want to have so I didn't really exactly love the way it turned out so I'm I kind of removed it and I'm going to go back in again with a little bit of the light Bermuda because it was almost too dark with the purple there we go so that's kind of how I like him or her whatever you want to call it so those are adorable so I'm here I'm just going to take my snips and I'm gonna just cut around these words. And I'm just kind of trimming them as close as I can. They don't have to be exact. They don't even have to be, honestly, they don't even need to be straight. So, cause I'm just gonna be piecing them together. Okay, and then what I usually do is just cut into each one. And then cut close as I can. So here's one and you can see I use this for something else. I'm just using the back of something that I was not totally happy with. Kind and human. All right, so we have all of our sentiments here, okay? I'm actually going to take this comma off because I don't really think that robots use commas, but whatever. Okay, so through the magic of doing this ahead of time, here is my fussy cut robot. Now, you can tell the difference here because this one, like I said, I did end up adding black embossing powder to this. So it kind of does give it a little bit more of a shine, which is really cute. Either one I think looks really good, but I do think between looking at the two that the embossing powder added does make it pop. So here is our robot and we have our words. So what I'm gonna do is pick these up and I'm just going to slide them over right here. I'll use this one for another project because I like fussy cutting. So, all right, now what we're going to do is we're going to grab a piece of white cardstock. And just to make this simple, this is the only reason I do this. I'm going to put a little, and this is three and three quarters by five, I'm fairly certain. Putting a little bit of the stamp and Seal Plus one here and I just kind of kind of make it a little bit less sticky and then I'm picking a spot where I'm kind of trying to line it up so it's straight I'm just gonna stick that on there and then I'm gonna take my mask and I just have a piece of paper that I've reused so I'm gonna put him down on my scrap paper and just like so okay so now I have, and I probably shouldn't have put this away, but that's okay. I have uh, a few of my, my blending brushes. Let me just tell you a quick story. My blending brushes were on back order for a really long time. And I just ordered them and they were actually supposed to come Friday. And then you guys know how UPS is. Sometimes they're coming and then they don't show up. So anyway, I had to use one of my, these. this was from the dollar store. This was prior to me buying the Stampin' Blends. I will say that I like the Stampin' Blends or the, the blending brushes better because the head is much larger, but I actually ordered enough of them that I'll be able to have them more for the hue. So I kind of had to, some projects I was working on, I kind of had to divvy them up. So 
This one is one I will say I would just keep for blacks or grays. So again, this is basic gray. I did try this with smoky slate, but it didn't really give me enough color. So I ended up moving on to basic gray instead. So you're just gonna kind of spread this around. I know everybody feels a little bit differently about where you hold your blending brush when you do it. I think the most important part is just to make sure that your mask particularly for this project that your mask is taped down and I also do try not to go in the same direction so I try to go clockwise and counterclockwise I don't really know if it makes a difference or not but I feel like it's getting the edges really well and the other thing you can do since we have this taped down and I kind of will try to start in different areas as well so there are some that are lighter some that are darker but what, I, what you can do is you can also, with just taping this, you could just lift up one side and then see what it looks like. Oops. And it's I think it's good enough just as it is. But if you want it a little bit darker, you could certainly make it a little bit darker. So you'll just keep adding. And again, you could do, you could tape top, bottom, and all this stuff down. But you can keep adding. I'm just going to finish cleaning off the residual ink on my brush with this. And then we'll call it good. So I'm just going to put this to the side. And the only thing you want to do is make sure that you take this and either wipe it off with a baby wipe, run it under running water or something just to get the residual ink off so it doesn't go to your next project. So now we have this little pattern that we've created. And I found, I actually did this a couple different ways, but the best way to do this is with a clear ruler because you can see the lines a little bit better. So for this one... I ended up doing it in red and then I also did do basic black because the gray was not quite dark enough. But I thought since our robot is more of a bright colored robot, what would it look like if we did it either with the Bermuda Bay or with the polished pink? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go with the Bermuda Bay and see how I think it looks. And then if I want to, we can always add a little bit of stuff. Now I will tell you this, this is a little bit more of a tedious process. This might not be for everybody. And if it's not for you, that's perfectly fine. Oops, use the wrong end. <laughs> you do want to use the bullet tip end for this because it gives you much more precise. Um, not really measurements, but it gives you much more precise lines when you do it. So it kind of depends on what you want to do. Do you want to go around and do all of it? Do you just want to do some of it? I kind of started with some of it and I felt like if you didn't do all of it, it really wasn't enhancing your card because it kind of looked like you started and like half stopped. And as much as you're able to, you do want to try to make sure that you're on the edge of the white, probably particularly because this is a darker gray and the Bermuda Bay versus using the red is definitely a lighter color. But again, if you don't really dig this, you could certainly skip it. I do love my sister-in-law, so I thought she would appreciate it. And you also could omit the ruler if you wanted to, but I don't really have a super um, good straight line drawing ability unless I'm doing it with a pencil and I'm really concentrating. So that's why I went with a ruler, just because I thought it was easier. So you're just blending the edges, lining these up the best you can. If you don't do all of them, again, your choice. I do have just a teeny bit. One other thing I wanna tell you, and I'm gonna tell you this ahead of time. If you're doing this, and granted, this is the second card that I've done with this. You could keep a little microfiber cloth just to dry the edge of your marker or your, um, sorry, not your marker, your ruler off with. So you don't have a smudge because they can tend to run just a little bit. So I am also just getting ready to, which I must admit, I'm a tiny bit nervous because I haven't done something in so long. Just gonna clean this one up here really quickly. I'm getting ready to do my stamp club in person again. And I haven't done one since probably 2019. So I was considering doing stamp club to go where you purchase a certain amount 
and then you would get the videos for free. Um, I had considered doing mailing, but sometimes with the mail and the reliability of the mail, I don't really know if it is worth it for people to do that again. So if that's something that you think you might be interested in, if you would like to do a pre-recorded club, online club, all the content will be exclusive to people who either purchase the, um, and I'll do these two by hand just because they're small. Who would you either purchase the kit? So people who are actually in person, which it is at someone's house. So it's not like I can add other people. But if that's something that you think you're interested in, leave me a comment or send me a message. And then if that sounds good, what I can do is when I am recording or creating the cards, I could just record a video because if I'm doing it, it's kind of simple to do it that way. But I also, at the same time, have a lot going on. So if that's not something that everyone is interested in, which I could understand, I will skip. Okay, almost done here. So again, I had contemplated with this too, with adding in the pink, but I almost think that when I did it before and I added the black and the red, I kind of felt like it took a little bit of something away. So I guess it depends on what you think. Let me just make sure I got them all. I feel like I missed one. Oops, that one's a little, oh, here we go. A little tiny triangle here. You're probably thinking you would have rather watch me fussy cut, right? And I could have pre-done this, which <laughs> after the fact, oh well. Oh, here's one more. Okay, so honestly though, we did do a lot of the video ahead of time, so it really wasn't terrifically long. Okay, so I think we're pretty good there. Now granted, Again, I'm going to just wipe this off now so I don't forget. But the ink that we used before was water-based ink. So the gray or, yeah, the basic gray that we did this with. So the only thing that would have smudged, and I noticed this down here at the bottom, which is why I said to wipe that off. This probably picked up a little bit of that residual pink. So, or the red from when I did this earlier. So it kind of just depends on what it is that you want to do with your card particularly. So I kind of figure what we would do is very similar to this and we'll just bring our little pieces in. Now what I did, and I'm gonna flip all these over, is I just use little pieces of the mini dimensionals. And the only reason I picked these is because I already had them handy and I kind of thought if we did it this way and I'm just going to snip this when when I'm doing these little line pieces here I kind of already snipped them down so I figured it would just be quite easy to just do these little pieces so I'm going to pull these few off I think these are a little bit longer than I need just going to take one of these and nip in half. But this will make a great Valentine's card. I mean, a great card for kids. I know my nephews will probably think this card is cute as well. And I'm sure my sister-in-law will also love it. So then what I'm going to do is just take the paper piercing end of my take your pick tool. And I'm just going to put some oops, of the smaller dimensionals around. You probably don't need as many as I put on earlier. I did try to make sure to put some on the feet. And what I ended up doing with the feet was I cut these little teeny strips here off at the end. And I just, I'll show you what I did. I just pieced this so it was kind of going straight up. So it kind of held the foot up, but it was also attaching to the bulk of it. And this one's just a teeny bit big. Let's see if I can grab this without 
making a mess. Okay, that's probably, well, I'm going to put one more on the lower end of this flower, and then we'll be good. Oops. There we go. Okay, so we have all of our little parts and pieces. I'm going to go ahead and remove these little backings from our words, and then we'll put this together. I, well, I'm wondering, and I think this probably could be a cute idea just to tie it together, so I will hold one up just to see what it looks like but I think it probably would also be cute doing it on Bermuda Bay or potentially doing it on the polished pink let me just close this and I'm gonna pull it out and we'll see now granted we're not live so I can't really take your vote but at the same time I think it would be cute on the polished pink which is a really bright pink color like nail polish. All right, so we have this, and I just need my trimmer, which my little furry friend was in here wreaking havoc earlier, so he had a ball that he was chasing, because he is very, I'm just going to cut this in half. He's very, very ball driven. I don't know if that's a shepherd thing or uh, my friend and I had talked prior that he may be one of those crazy kind of shepherds that I think it's called a Malinois, a Malinois. I don't know how you pronounce it. I'm not very good with pronouncing French words. I don't know if I ever told you the story, but for the longest time when I was growing up, I thought Des Moines was pronounced Desmonez, which is pretty hilarious. Oops, I just saw I missed one little other piece. I'm going to gra <laughs> grab that real quick. And I thought Michelle Pfeiffer's name was Michelle Piffier. So there's a little humor for you while I'm finishing up this card in my hilarity of naive things that I've said. My dad thought that was absolutely hilarious that I thought her name was Michelle Piffier. It's <laughs> making her super fancy. But anyway, I do have a little piece of, I'm going to turn this around just because I see that little smudgy part, which I can kind of hide at the bottom. But just to put this on here, we'll just see what we think it looks like. And I wanted to change this. So I'm actually going to add I think it looks kind of cute. I think it also would look equally cute if we did it on Bermuda Bay. But you also have this just little line piece in here. And I thought just for something a little bit different, just visually interesting for our triangle, I'm going to pull out the basic gray one more time. And I'm just going to take this the little lined image and I'm going to stamp it kind of going across. And you can flip it around if you want. Just kind of changing the direction. That, that looks good. I don't want to overdo it. And I don't know. I think that looks cute. So we'll see. If you also think that it would look nice on gray. So I'm just going to pull it just to show you. And I'll flip this over to the back. I think it would look. I think it makes it look a much more serious card when you do it on the gray. So since this one is a pink robot. Let us just. I'm just going to grab my liquid glue. Let us just uh, do it on pink just for the heck of it I want to make sure I have my little smudgy part at the bottom because I can always cover that up with my triangle looks pretty good okay so again this was just basic white and then we layered it onto polished pink I'm gonna grab my glue once more and we'll kind of put this one askew so we're kind of sim simulating the card we did before, but also not at the same time. I have him come up here. And then since we have all of our stuff, we can just piece these together. Oh goodness, what did I do with my one piece? I lost my greetings. I lost my greetings greeting. I might have to do one more of those. And then this one is just a teeny bit. When I put this on, I slightly skewed it. So I'm just going to trim that little bit off so it doesn't show. So there's that. Let's see. Can I find my, my greetings? Oh, nuts. I lost one of my words. Ah, here it is. This is on my marker. 
and did I push that down? I did because I kind of like to have them so they're like wonky. <laughs> But I think that is a really, really cute stamp, really cute card, adorable stamp set. And again, really, aside from the fact that we did a little bit of tracing with the lines, I think it's a really cute card. And I think you probably could have also done this with doing, now granted, maybe I would have let it dry a little bit more with the gray, but doing it with the bright or the dark polish paint and then put it onto the Bermuda Bay cardstock. I think that would have been a great idea as well. But tell me, do you think you like it better with the embossed? robot or just the stamp robot something about it really does make it I wish I would have done it on this one but maybe we'll have to switch which card I end up sending her in the long run but I think they're really really cute so I do have one more than I can cut out so I can make another version so maybe what I'll do for this one is I will redo the masking and I will outline it so I'll redo it dry it and then I'll outline it with the dark polish pink. And then I'll put it on Bermuda Bay. And then you guys can tell me which one you think is the best. I do like adding the lines to the background because it adds just a little bit of something. The other thing you could do with that triangle, granted it would kind of block off some of the stitching, which I guess that kind of depends on how you feel about it. But you could also emboss the triangle if you wanted to add a little bit of something else to it. So you could leave just the gray in the background and then make the triangle stand out a little bit more. But I think it's really, really cute. One other thing you could add to these if you wanted to is you could add the shimmery crystal effects. Now you do want to add this afterwards and allow it to have time to dry because it does set. It goes from an, an, an opaque to a completely clear sparkly finish. So you could use this for your flower maybe. So I think what I'll do is I'll put a little bit of this on my flower, my cog flower. So you have to let this set and dry. I would say, I usually say give it a good few hours but to be 100% honest with you what I usually do is I will add this and it will actually give you a raised image I don't know if you can see that on there or not but it's definitely raised and I will let this sit somewhere completely out of everybody's touch mostly mine for 24 hours and then it really gets a cool effect it is completely clear but it has a lot of sparkle to it so I think that's really fun if you'd like to get any of the supplies used to make this you can certainly head to my online store reach the stamper.stampinup.net also, while you have time, if you are thinking of it, leave me a comment and let me know what you think about the online club, which would be a club to go. So let me know about that because I will be doing it soon, so I can certainly record the videos for it if it's something that you can get some people interested in and let me know. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you have any questions about the project or anything that I did today, you're always welcome to send me an email at reachthestamper at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a super fun day.